I'm here in Sydney town and no one could dispute that I'm standing in front of one of the true national treasures of our time, the Sydney Opera House. We're here as part of the Goodyear National Treasures Project, which is protecting Australia's national treasure, you. Follow me as I take you on a walking tour of the rocks and surrounds and meet some of the people, national treasures you could call them, that contribute to the charm of this historic place. If you want to be at the centre of things right here in Sydney, then it's hard to go past this landmark hotel. The Park Hyatt has taken pride of place at the rocks now for 21 years, with many of the guest rooms with private balconies overlooking one of the world's most famous views of the harbour and the opera house. The hotel is definitely five star, with a variety of restaurants to eat in. I've chosen to go for the afternoon tea that they have on offer daily. Let me see, we've got macaron, cucumber sandwiches and, of course, scones. And if a cup of tea's not your thing, then you can enjoy a glass of rosé champagne. Venture out of the Park Height and you'll find yourself entering a world that has a unique place in our colonial history. The Rocks is the site of the first European-Australian settlement when, in 1788, a fleet of 11 British ships moored in Sydney Cove carrying a human cargo of convicts. You can wander around these historic streets on your own or do what I did and take a tour. So now we're at Suez Canal. Yeah, well, Suez Canal is one of the first streets of Sydney and uh, named slightly uh, humorously after the, obviously, the Suez Canal in the Middle East, but the sewer used to run down from the rocks all the way down here. It wasn't very pleasant. <laughs> But there was also uh, gangs in this area, so crime spread fast in the rocks after the first fleet arrived. Jeez, it sounded like glamorous times. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it was. Yeah, we're coming down from Suez Canal into Nurses' Walk, and this is where they built the first hospital. So the first fleet arrived, and after 252 days at sea, where 48 people died and 28 new babies were born, um, but a lot of people were not that well surprise, after, after a bad diet and um, nine months on boats. So they built a hospital, which was immediately populated by many people, and then it was nearly two years before the second fleet arrived, and they were desperately short of food, and they were hoping the second fleet would bring a whole lot of food, but what it brought was 1,200 convicts, no food, but a prefabricated hospital. So the hospital was much improved when they built that, but nearly a third of the second fleet had died on the voyage, and many of the rest were ill. So they set up a whole temporary hospital um, about a block from here down at the overseas terminal. These days the area is home to many cosy cafes and art galleries. There's something for all tastes from the Museum of Contemporary Art through to galleries selling local art from charming Victorian terraces. Some of the people who have contributed to the fabric of life here are as iconic as the place themselves, like artist Ken Doan, whose gallery takes pride of place on Hickson Road. There's also a shop front housing magnificent photos by famous landscape photographer Ken Duncan. Ken, this photo is amazing. Can you tell us about it? This is actually where I live on the central coast, so it's a very easy one to photograph because <laughs> I drive by it every day and I just waited for the perfect moment when all the leaves went and I got it. In your experience, where would your most favourite places be taking a photograph in this country? Up in the Kimberleys there's a place called King George Falls, which is amazing. I love the high country down in Victoria. I love all our coastal beaches that we have as well. So there's so many to name and they change all the time, so different time, different seasons. I love being out in the beauty of nature and my job is to bring it back to others to hopefully inspire them as well. Another clever and famous Australian that has contributed to life at the Rocks for over 20 years now with his restaurant Rock Pool on George is chef extraordinaire Neil Perry. We caught up with him on this occasion at his Rockpool Bar and Grill in Hunter Street in the CBD. Hi Neil, how are you? I'm um, great, thanks Brody. I am so excited to be here. I've eaten at your Melbourne Rockpool many a time and I'm very much looking forward to a tour up here. Yeah, well that's a wonderful restaurant. This is an amazing Art Deco Palace, so let's go. Sounds good. The Rockpool Bar and Grill Sydney is situated in the 1936 Emil Soderstein designed American style Art Deco skyscraper. The dining style is simple and uncomplicated like its food. It offers perfectly wood-fired grilled meats and seafood from Australia's very best producers. So Neil, what's the cornerstone to good cooking? 
Well, it's actually uh, sourcing the finest produce. It really is about the ingredients for me, personally. And you've seen and done so much. You've owned restaurants, you've written cookbooks, you've started food programs. What's your key to success and what advice do you have to people that are starting out? You've got to be ready to work harder and work more than anyone. And quite often, it's not the most talented people who are successful, but the most persistent. And you're famous for your beef here, is that correct? Yeah, this is, I think, one of the great steakhouses in the world. And what are we having for lunch? T-bone, really wonderful sirloin, grass-fed. It's been aged for about 28 days. This is a rib that's been aged for 50 days. And I just think that salad and steak for lunch is perfect, <laughs> or fish. Uh, and then at night, we love to have potato gratin and chips and you know all the carbs as well. Oh, it sounds amazing. Well, it's been such an honor being here with you in Sydney, and I can't wait to dig in. So thank you so Thanks, much. Thanks, Brody. Cheers. Cheers. If you would like any info on what you've just seen in my story, go to the websites on screen. You too can get involved in the Goodyear National Treasures Project. To find out how, just go to goodyear.com.au forward slash national treasures.